Hello everyone, my name is Esther Reguavoyne and welcome back to the cruise with Esther. So if you are planning to apply for the DV 2026 green card lottery, you are in the right place. So today I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to correctly fill out the EDV entry form, which is also known as the DS5501 form for the 2026 diversity visa lottery. So the EDV entry form is the online application you must complete to enter the diversity visa lottery. And it's super, super important to get everything right. But don't worry, I've got you covered. So let's go over the most important sections of the form and how to fill them out correctly. Remember, submitting a complete and accurate entry is very, very crucial to your application. Only one mistake could disqualify your application. So first thing first, make sure you are on the official U.S. Department of State website for the Diversity Visa Lottery, which is dvprogram.state.gov. Be very, very careful that there are lots of scam sites out there. So once you're on the correct page, you click on this link to start your EDV entry form. We strongly encourage you to complete the entry form yourself without a visa consultant, you know, or visa agent, or, you know, if there's any other person who offers to help you fill out this application, make sure that you are present when your um, form is being prepared so that you can provide the correct answers to the questions and keep your unique confirmation number and a printout of your con confirmation screen screen because it is extremely important that you have the printout of your confirmation page and the unique number because that's what you're going to use to check the status of your application after the results is out okay so guys here is the ds5501 electronic diversity visa entry form so this is actually a page where you have to validate the form so you can see here we have the authentication code. Here we have NYUEP. Please note that this is a sample form. So this is not the exact code you would see on your own form. So whatever you see here is what you will enter in this text box here. And then when you enter, after you enter that, then you click on submit to go into the form where you'll be answering a lot of questions. So please note that you have to enter this correctly to validate your form to be able to enter and I mean to be able to go into the remaining pages of this form. So this is the first part. Number one is your name. So in some countries, it's been called last name. Some call it family name. Some call it surname. So that's what you'll be entering here. If you don't have any last or family name, you check the box here. And your first name, you have to put it here. If you don't have a first name, you check the box here. No first name. And then here, you put your middle name. If you don't have a middle name, you check the box here. So one thing you need to know is that your last family name, first name, middle name, surname has to be entered exactly as it appears on your passport. So if you have a passport, for example, if your passport shows only your first and last or family or surname, please list that exact name and the first name on your passport. Do not include a middle name unless it is included on your passport. So if your passport includes a first, a middle name, and a last or family or surname, please list them in the following order as it appears on your passport on this form. So if you have only one name, make sure that you enter that in the last or family name field. So number two is your birth date. So you enter your day the day you were born the month you were born and the year you were born that's very very easy to um, understand and then your gender they only have male and female so you can either select if you are a male you select the male option if you are a female you select the female option so the next next question which is number four is city where you were born so you need to enter the city where you were born I'm from Nigeria, so let me use Nigeria as an example. If you are from Nigeria and you were born in Benin or Lagos or Abuja or Port Harcourt, whatever city you were born, make sure you put that in the text box here. 
and it says enter Beth City only. Do not enter district, county, province, or state. So most times, if you even have a passport, it will be listed in there in your passport city where you were born. So you enter the same city as it is on your passport. And then next, which is number five, is the country where you were born. So please use the name of the country currently used for the place you were born. So if you were born in Nigeria, you select Nigeria. If you were born in Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, you can see on this sample form, you selected Iraq. If you were born in Iraq, you select that. So wherever you were born, make sure you select that option. And then I already posted some videos on the eligible countries and countries that are also not ineligible for the DV 2026 program. So make sure you check those videos to know if you are eligible to apply for the DV 2026 um, lottery. So next, um, we go down to number six. So this is the country of eligibility for the DV program. So your country of eligibility will normally be the same as your country of birth. So your country of eligi eligibility is not related to where you live or your nationality if it is different from your country of birth. If you were born in a country that is not eligible, please make sure that you, know, you select yes or no. So are you claiming eligibility based on the country you were born? So all you need to do is select yes or no. So if not, you must enter the country from which you are claiming eligibility. So if, for instance, you were born in Nigeria or you have a Swedish nationality, so what you would do if you say, are you claiming eligibility based on the country where you were born? You would select no. And then if not, you must enter the country from which you are claiming eligibility. And then you select Sweden. But that means you also need to provide a nationality um, proof, a proof of nationality for the country that you are claiming eligibility for. So that's it for number six. And for number seven, which is the entrance photograph. So you have to upload your recent photographs, which has been taken within the last six months of yourself, your spouse, and all your derivative children included on your entry. So you need to make sure that you put everyone that would be on this application, you need to upload their passport photographs. So that's it here. And um, if you have uploaded your photograph, it will tell you if it's successful or not. So next is the mailing address. So the mailing address, you need to put in where you would be receiving a letter. So if it's your house address, you can put that. If it's a um, if it's somebody else's address, you can use that. But make sure that you put in an address that you can receive letters um, with. So if it's in care of somebody else, you can put the name here. But that's very, I mean, that's optional. Then you put the address line one. Some have like very longer addresses. Maybe there's another part. I mean, if the address line one is not enough, you can put the remaining part in the address line two. And then you enter the city of the address. You put in the district, county, province, or state in this text box. If the country has a postal code, you can put it. If there's no postal code or no zip code, please check this box here. And then you put in the country of the address that you'll be using in this application. You select that from the drop down list here. So that's for mailing address and next country where you live today. So you make sure that you put in the country where you live. That is where you are applying for. So if you live in Nigeria, I mean, sorry, Nigeria is not eligible. Maybe if you live in Iraq, you live in Ghana, you live in Kenya, you can select that here. And your phone number, you can put in your phone number, but it says it's optional. So that's, I mean, it's dependent on, if you want to add that, you can add that there. If you don't want to, that's fine. And then number 11 is email address. So an email, you have to put in an email address to which you have direct access to. And we continue to have direct access through May of the next year, because that's where you would receive the, um, because if you, if you check this entrance status check in May, 
and then you have been selected, you will later receive a follow-up email communication um, from the Department of State with details if an immigrant visa interview becomes available or not. So make sure that you put in the right email address or the correct email address in which you have direct access to just in case you receive an email from the Department of State. But just know that the Department of State will never send you an email telling you that you have been selected for the DV program. That one you need to check yourself from their website. So next question is uh, number 12. What is the highest level of education you have achieved as of today? So as of the time you are um, putting in this application, what is your highest level of education? If you are in school, maybe you, are, you, you have a BSc and you are pursuing a master's degree and you have not completed it yet, please do not add that you have a master's degree. You put that you have a bachelor's degree. So the highest level of education listed here, if you have primary school only, you select that. If it's high school, you select whatever options that you know is applicable to you from these selections here. You make sure that you select the right one for yourself. But just know that you must have a minimum um, of a high school diploma reflecting the completion of a full course of study. As you can see, the notes here, that's what it's saying. Vocation schools or equivalent degrees are not acceptable. So you know you need to make sure that you have a minimum of a high school diploma. And then next, which is number 13, is your marital status. So what is your current marital status when you are putting in this application as at the time of this application. If you are unmarried, you select unmarried. If you are married, you select that you are married, divorced, widowed, or legally separated. So legal separation means that a court has formally declared that you and your spouse are legally separated. So legal separation means that your spouse would not be eligible to migrate as your derivative. So take note of that. If you know you are separated with your spouse and you still want to add them, then you need to select that maybe you guys are still married, you know, because if you put legally separated, then you cannot add that person to your application. So take note of that. And then um, next is the number of children. So your number of children, you need to enter. If you have two, three, four children, make sure that you add, you put that number here. And once you put that number, it will display um, and you click on, um, continue, it will display another page where you need to enter details of your children. So you need to list the name, the date of birth, the gender, the city or town of birth and country of birth for all living unmarried children under 21 years of age. Regardless of whether they are living with you or intend to accompany or follow to join you, you know, should you migrate to the United States. So you need to also submit individual photographs of each of your children using the same technical specifications as your own, um, I mean, photograph as the one you uploaded for yourself. So be sure to make sure that you include all living natural children, that's, you know, biological children, all living legally adopted by you. If you adopted any child, you make sure that you add them there. And all living stepchildren who are unmarried and under the age of 21 on the date of your electronic entry. Even if you are no longer legally married to the child's parents, and even if the child does not currently reside with you or will not migrate or immigrate with you, it's still okay to add them to your application as long as they are under the age of 21. So married children and children, I know you're asking what about my children who are married or more than the age of 21. Married children and children who are already age 21 or older, when you submit your entry, are not eligible for the DV program. So they will need to put in the application separately for themselves. But however, the Child Status Protection Act protects children from aging out in sec certain um, circumstances. So if you're uh, submitting your application and you're maybe you're submitting now is October and then, you know, your child is going to turn 21 in December, for instance, you can still add them 
to the number of children that you have as long as they have not completed 21 as at the time of the application because if you if your child turns 21 before the visa issuance it's possible that he or she may be treated as though they were under 21 for visa processing purposes because by the time you applied for this application they hadn't turned 21 then Okay, so guys, that's it. So once you've filled out all the sections, it's time to review all the information that you have entered on the DS5501 form. Double check all your information before you submit, especially your name and date of birth. And date of birth, it has to be exactly as it is on your passport. So if you have a passport, whatever name is there, make sure that is exactly the way you entered it on this application form. So make sure you check everything, your name, date of birth, gender, city where you were born, country, country where you were born, country of eligibility for the DV program, your entrance photograph, make sure it has been received, your mailing address, country where you live today, your phone number, that's optional, your email address, and the highest level of education you have achieved as of today. So make sure you check all this data. What is your current marital status? the number of children that you've entered. Make sure all this information has been entered correct, correctly. So guys, after you've submitted your application, you will receive a confirmation number. So this is the confirmation number that is going. you are going to receive. So you make sure that you keep this number safe because you will need it to check your status when the lottery results are announced. So all you need to do is print this page or you know you can write your record <laughs> number somewhere you know just make sure that you do something to save this page before you close this window if not you will not be able to retrieve it after you close this window if you don't know how to save it as pdf all you need to do you can right click on the page you will see print then instead of clicking print or instead of selecting your printer Click on the drop down there and then you can select PDF, save as PDF. So you can save this form as a PDF and then you have it either on your phone or on your laptop or the computer you are using. And that way, you know, you have a paper copy or if you have a printer available, you can print it out and keep the paper somewhere to know that. I mean, where you know you have access to it when the results are out. So guys, that's it. And now you know exactly how to fill out the EDV entry form, which is also the DS5501 for the DV2026 Green Card Lottery. Remember, it's free to apply and you should only use the official US government website. Good luck to all of you applying this year. Thank you for watching. If you found this video very, very helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more updates on immigration and the DV lottery process. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or need further guidance. I'll be more than happy to help as much as I can. See you in my next video. And do not forget to stay charming, stay fabulous, stay healthy, and stay blessed. Bye.